The Spline Influence modifier allows you to make a soft selection of spline vertices and pass those up the stack to be processed. And in this example, I will create what can be called a spline cluster in which I'm using one helper object to make a selection and another helper object to transform that selection. Let's create those two helpers in the Create panel. Go to Helpers, Point, click anywhere in the top viewport, right-click to exit creation, and immediately make another one as a clone, so they'll be overlapping. Edit menu, clone, change it to a copy, and click OK. Point 002, the copy, is currently selected. Let's go to its Modify panel. Change its display type from cross to box so that we can tell the difference between the two of those. And also change its color. Going up into the color swatch, I like to use the AutoCAD ACI palette instead of the 3DS Max palette. I'll just give it a pretty bright red and click OK. And now I can tell the difference between the two of those. So they will start out in the same position. I will link one to the other. I'll link 0.002 which is going to be the transformer or mover to point 001, which is going to be the selector. So we'll do that with the select and link tool. Go up here, click on select and link, maybe get in a little bit closer and click and drag from the box onto the cross. Release the mouse, go over to the move tool and let's rename these. The red box is the child and it's currently 0.002. I'll rename that to Mover. And the Cross, which is the parent, or 0.001, I'll rename to Selector. And then move it over to the top of these vines on the column. With the Selector selected, move that over, and we see that the red Mover object follows along. Go over to the front viewport, right-click to activate it. Try to move that just about as close as you can to the top of that uppermost vine. Do that in the left view as well. All right, now that's positioned as pretty closely as we need it to be. We can now select the spline object, go into its modifier list, and add the spline influence modifier. We can turn on Show Knots, and at first no selection is made because we have not yet selected our Influence Helper object. And that's going to be the cross, or the selector. So in the Modify panel, click on the Pick button, and then click on the cross, or selector object, and the knots light up in color indicating their amount of soft selection. There are a couple of distance parameters here. I want this to fall off much more quickly than it is. We can reduce that far distance and set that to a value of somewhere around 75 or 80. I'll give it 80. We have limited control over the shape of that fall off. We only have three options here under fall off type, linear, smooth, or smoother. I'm going to choose the smoother type and that's going to result in a pretty exaggerated S-curve to the selection. And the vertices here at the far distance will be selected proportionally less. Now we've made that selection. If we want, we can move the selector object around and see how that affects the selection. If we move it up and down or around, we can choose to select different parts of the spline object. I'll undo those movements with Control-Z. Our goal here is to create a cluster of movable vertices. So we need to now apply a modifier for that. And that's linked X form. With the spline object selected, go back into its modifier list and add a linked X form. And then we need to choose the mover object as the control object. So click pick control object. Click on the red box, which is the mover. And now it's assigned as the control object. Then select that red box or mover object. And with the move tool active, 
We can position that box in order to change the shape of the spline curves. We can use any transform, rotate or scale, maybe scale equally in all axes, back to the move tool, maybe do this in another viewport. And we have some basic gross level control over the shape of that spline using this method. And this is all reversible and non-destructive. If I want to restore the vertices back to their original positions, I just need to plug those values into the transforms. For the move tool, we want to be in parent reference coordinate space, and then right click on that move tool, and in its transform type in dialog, type in zeros for the position, press tab and type in a zero. Likewise with rotation, set the rotations to zero, and the scales to 100%. Now that we've restored the original transforms for that mover object, the original shape of the spline is restored. And we could have done that in other ways using the align tool, for example, but I chose to do it with the type in values so that we could sort of see conceptually what was going on. Our selection can be changed non-destructively as well. I can close the transform type in dialog, reselect the spline object, go back into its spline influence, and change the distance. And we can determine a different area for influence. Now, because I've linked these two objects together, and because the linked X form is in effect here, if I change the position of my selector object currently, then I'm going to mangle my rig here. So if you do need to change the position of this selector, then you'll need to actually delete the linked X form first. Move that selector wherever it needs to go for a different selection area, maybe down at the bottom or something. And then recreate the linked X form modifier and reassign the mover object. So select the splines, do another linked X form, Pick the control object, which is the red mover. And now we're in a good position to select that mover and use the move tool and change the shape of the spline. Okay, that's how to set up a basic rig to non-destructively edit clusters of spline vertices using the spline influence modifier.